My name is Igor, and I will talk about performance of vector databases. Uh, just a few words about me. I work as SDT developer and test for more than five, almost six years. And I started with development of internal uh, automation platform for infrastructure provisioning and auto testing and stuff like this. And then I worked on testing of uh, internal message bus, very high loaded for um, uh, for trading platform, and then I developed infrastructure tools uh, for like for Kubernetes, Docker, that kind of stuff uh, in Tinkoff Bank. And currently, I work at Superbase, and uh, in Superbase, I do uh, different kind of tools uh, to improve quality of products and uh, developer experience for inside developers, for outside developers. And what is uh, Superbase? Superbase is an open source Firebase alternative that uh, empowers you to create your applications faster by providing a set of tools that are also open source and they based on Postgres and they use Postgres a lot. And uh, they do authentication, user management out of the box, also provide APIs. Uh, edge functions, real-time storage, S3 integrations, and Vector. Uh, vector is based on PG Vector open source extension. And uh, why do we need it at all? Uh, this will be our talk today. Uh, so we will cover like a bit of theory about embeddings, uh, what is retrieval augmented generation, and other use cases for embeddings. Uh, then about vector databases and how to benchmark them. And we finish with a little bit like practical example, how to uh, load test, uh, uh, performance test your database. So uh, embeddings, uh, they came like super popular last year. And we can see because the usage of PG vector uh, increases like by very high margin, like it maybe go like 100 times more than before uh, when the chat GPT uh, gained its popularity. Um, so what are embeddings? Embeddings, uh, uh, they generally capture the relatedness of text, images, videos, or any other kind of information to, uh, to perform later a, a similarity search. Uh, and how it looks like, we can pass some documents uh, to the machine learning model that will generate uh, from this like discrete information uh, a vector. Uh, that's it. So embedding is generate a vector. And uh, if we as a human will be given a task to group this kind of sentences, it will be pretty easy, right? So first two. Uh, generally is the same thing. And the third one is uh, not from this world. Uh, it's super easy. But for the computer, it's not as easy uh, because uh, like semantically, the first and the second, second sentence, they don't have similar words except the. Uh, and uh, embeddings are made to, were created to like, cover this task. And after the machine learning model will process it and turn it into vectors, we would expect these vectors to be located something like this. So these two will be somewhere close to each other. And I like ham sandwiches will be far away from it. Um, this is, of course, two dimensional space. And in reality, embeddings uh, much more high dimensional. For example, other model by OpenAI is 1536 dimensions. And some open source models like GT small, which is also very good, but works only with English, for example, uh, has three. 384 uh, dimensions. Some like for image searches, uh, they're like a bit low dim lower dimension models, like 200, something like this. But it's still uh, a lot. So what are use cases for embeddings? Uh, it can be like search, recommendation system, clustering, uh, anomaly detection, uh, classifications, and all this stuff. Uh, one of it, obviously, is like image search based on text queries or images. And uh, by is Yandex here because they have a very good dat data set with 1 billion uh, embeddings that you can use to performance, to perf test your database. Another one, of course, is Spotify. And when you enable, when you turn on some music, 
uh, for example, mix for the day uh, beneath there is a uh, embeddings model and similarity search. Uh, and the use case, which was also like one of the most hot uh, last year is retrieval augmented generation. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it or not, uh, but uh, the idea here is that uh, large language models uh, are prone to hallucinations. And uh, uh, one of the way to uh, kind of overcome this hallucination problem is to uh, train the model uh, further on your data. Uh, but it can be uh, not cost effective or you cannot have access to model to do this. Uh, so much more straightforward and easy way to do this is to provide some additional data, additional context uh, to the large language models when you uh, give it some prompt. Uh, for example, it may work like this. You ask something, uh, chat GPT or llama model, uh, whatever. Uh, and before you actually uh, send a prompt to it with your question, you create an embedding uh, from your question. You find similar vectors to your question in the database. Uh, you retrieve this information in the form of text. Uh, you add it to the prompt with the original question and you pass everything uh, in the context to the large language model so it can uh, provide more accurate results. Uh, other ways to get the relevant information may be like use search, just like Google it. Like Bing does, for example, it splits your question to uh, multiple queries. It search the internet, find some results, and add it to the prompt. Or if, for example, you have a very large platform uh, and you renamed it from Twitter to X recently, you can create embeddings for all tweets in the world and launch Grok. Uh, and it will always have like the most relevant information, the most recent from the tweets. Uh, so if, for example, you don't have uh, access to this and you have access to like loads of information in your company, like support tickets uh, and a lot of like internal documentation that doesn't exist in the public internet, you maybe also want to do some similar search over this. And uh, you can do this uh, using vector databases. So you will pass this information to the embeddings model. You get the embeddings. You store everything in the vector database. And you want to uh, search in this database. But you don't want to wait like for an hour when uh, you will find the relevant information. So there are vector indexing indexes that uh, can speed up your searches. Uh, these are some databases. Some of them are proprietary, proprietary uh, not open, with uh, some custom in-house indexes like Pinecon. Some of them are open source like Mubus. And some of them are just general purpose databases like uh, Relational or ClickHouse, uh, like Columnar Database or Timescale for uh, time series. Uh, but they have like extensions like Postgres, for example, with PG Vector that allow you to store and search for embeddings. Um, and in terms of uh, indexes, there are pretty a lot of them. And these are practical implementations uh, in different databases. Uh, and uh, let's cover a couple of them really quickly. So uh, the first group is uh, tree-based algorithms for approximate nearest neighbor search. Uh, so we have uh, KNN, which is k nearest neighbor search, uh, which is always exact nearest neighbors, but is pretty slow in most situations if you have not, if you don't have a lot of compute to do uh, search in parallel. Uh, and ANN is approximate nearest neighbor where you find like you think they are pretty close that you can return them as results of queries. And uh, tree-based algorithms, they split the space to like forests, a uh, group of trees, and then uh, the search kind of goes over the short pass and search in some of the trees, which is generally faster. Another way is LSH-based uh, algorithms. It, here we apply several hash functions uh, to vectors. And then we expect that vectors that are close to each other will be in the same hash bucket. So you have to search for a small number of hash buckets uh, for the really 
close vectors. Uh, one of uh, databases that actually use this approach a lot is ClickHouse. Uh, they built one of their solutions for vector search on top of uh, LSH. Uh, and another one is Faiz uh, by Meta. Uh, another one is uh, inverted file index. The picture looks pretty much like uh, trees. But here we like also group uh, vectors into uh, segments. We have like nodes there, and we search only uh, in one or maybe in few uh, uh, close clusters uh, to find similar vectors. Uh, PG vector uh, initially worked uh, with IVF flat implementation, and uh, the last one I will talk a little bit today is uh, hierarchical, hierarchical navigatable small world. Uh, and here, uh, it is a very efficient algorithm. It uh, has the complexity of n log n for all operations, search, insert, delete, uh, which make it very good. So for example, with IVF flat, uh, you have to rebuild index pretty frequent if you do a lot of inserts or deletions. Uh, with HNSW, you don't have to do this. It will remain uh, effective. And how it works, uh, it can be divided into two parts. So the first one is hierarchical, and the second one, navigatable small world. Uh, the second part means that uh, in our graph, uh, we have nodes that uh, are connected uh, with nodes that are close to each other, and also they have like long distance connections. And this helps with a pretty fast search, because if they will be all connected only to nodes that are close to them, the search will be uh, pretty long, because you have to go uh, through a lot of hops. But here we start at the, like, at the high level, we find uh, where the vectors are sparse, less sparse, sorry, and uh, then we go down this chart until we find the vector that is close uh, to what we need. Uh, and uh, as you can see, uh, when we go higher in uh, this uh, in layers, uh, we just emit some vectors, uh, and this way, like this level distributes like long connections, this longer, and this uh, very short dimensions. So let's jump to benchmarking. Uh, when we choose the vector database for our use case, uh, we not only have like the performance side of things, we of course have to evaluate like how good is the developer experience with it, how easy it is to host and manage this database, but of course benchmarking is here uh, as well uh, because we don't want our users to wait too long uh, to get the results. Uh, especially for search or recommendation platforms, maybe less for uh, retrieval augmented generation, but uh, yeah. So one of the most uh, used uh, tool is ANN Benchmarks. It's ANN Benchmarks repo. It's a Python project uh, made for evaluation of uh, databases and indexes. And uh, to add uh, a new database, for testing in this project, you just have to implement a couple of methods in the base ANN class. Uh, for example, uh, you have to implement initialize method that will uh, launch the database. Um, uh, then we have a fit uh, to put vectors into the database and create an index, and then query uh, to do a query. Uh, in the database. We also have a batch query, which is async, uh, and we have to run batch query and get batch results if we want to run queries in batches. Uh, and of course, we can add uh, data sets to this project. For this, we need to add a function that will load that data set from internet somewhere uh, and split the data set uh, to vectors for uh, storing in the database and for querying. Uh, we already saw a picture from this project uh, with a benchmark, and yeah, it has a lot of databases tested, uh, and you can contribute to it. Another one that we will actually use today is VectorDB benchmark. Uh, the repo is created by Quadrant. Uh, they are also a vector database, specialized vector database, uh, and uh, they made this pretty good project. Uh, 
if I were you, I would also use this one because it's much better structured. Uh, it uses OP in a very clever way. Uh, and we will see it right now. So to add data set uh, to this project, we only need to add a small object into JSON. Here we add dbpedia openai one m data set. In the previous one, it was the same data set. So it is uh, a data set of 1 million embeddings created with OpenAI other model for Wikipedia articles. And uh, what else we have here? So uh, it is also easy to add data sets here. You can add to JSON because there is an interface for a reader of the data set where you can read the data to uh, put into the database, read the queries. Uh, and there are a couple of them implemented already for ndjson, jsonl, or h5, for example. Uh, and uh, another part that we may want to implement is obviously the part to add new databases uh, or indexes for testing. And here it is split into a couple of files and a couple of interfaces in the engine base client. Uh, if you want to follow on your phone, you can scan the core code. It will lead to this. Uh, project here. Uh, so what we have here, uh, we don't have to implement all of them, but a couple of them we have to. The first one is base configurator, and it used to create a database, initialize it, and do whatever we need so database will work. Uh, and let's implement it for PG vector. I will use Vex library. It is open source and on GitHub. Uh, you can find the link later in the materials for this talk. Uh, we need to import it. We need to create a client for the database. We can also start the database here if you want, but uh, I prefer testing this on hardware or at least on virtual machines, uh, not in Docker. Uh, so I only create a client here. Uh, then we can clean the state uh, of the database. Uh, for Postgres PG vector, it is pretty easy. We just have to drop the table and that's it. Uh, and, uh, of course, create a new table. We have uh, dimension, dimensions of the data set of the vectors uh, provided by uh, the data set itself. Uh, so we can use it to create a table uh, with vector type. Um, in the background, VEX will uh, add a pitch vector section if it's needed. Uh, we'll create some other stuff uh, that may be needed. It can also do some work for you and create indexes if you don't know the best parameters yourself yet. Uh, so another one is base uploader, which is used for uploading the data to the database. And it can also do a post upload, which can be index creation, for example. And here we again initialize the client, uh, the VEX client. We uh, implement upload batch method by just doing upsort. Uh, and post upload, we create index. Uh, we can also pass here uh, index type, IVF flat, and HNSW supported by PG vector. And we can also pass um, index parameters here. Uh, like for HNSW, it is M and EF construction, which control how precise will be the index and how long it will be built. Uh, then we have base searcher. Uh, well, it is just for the query. Uh, again, initialized uh, the client. And here, we just need to, to use one method, CL, uh, just table query, and use the vector that uh, was passed uh, by the base client. Uh, that, that's actually everything we need here. And uh, the last bit uh, is uh, create an experiment. Uh, it is also a JSON configuration. Uh, we can, uh, every experiment can be split into two parts. The first one is a plot part where, where we upload vectors and we create an index. And the second one is uh, the search. And we can control uh, how many threads will be used to query the database. Uh, it can affect uh, results significantly, of course. Uh, I wanted to do this live. Uh, but uh, I was afraid about an internet, so I made a recording. Um, so uh, to run it, we just run a Python command, just run a Python script, uh, and I run only the upload part uh, using the parameter skip search. Uh, it's a bit 
uh, speed up video, ATX uh, or so. Uh, there will be like three minutes to upload the vectors and about 40, I think, or 50 to create an index, HNSW index. It is a bit slower than IVF, but with the latest release uh, of uh, PG vector, it should be speed up to like three, four, uh, no, sorry, like maybe 20 times even. Uh, so we can uh, use this query to see that vector is being created. And after this amount of seconds, 4800 uh, index will be created uh, with parameters m equal to 32 and ef constructions to 80. ef construction only affects uh, um, how like fast will be index built, and m32 uh, affects uh, uh, precision greatly. Uh, so let's jump to vector search part of an experiment. Uh, here I use uh, a couple of parameters. The first one is uh, parallel one, which means that the first search experiment will be done in one thread. Uh, and later I use two Excel, uh, in two ways it's just Postgres, uh, eight core machine with uh, 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, so I used parallel eight and parallel 16, also 20. 40 and 100 to see how parallelization of clients that are querying the database will affect the search. Uh, for the one-threaded experiment, we see uh, QPS queries per second on the level of about 70 to 80, uh, and it will speed up up to like 16 and 20. It will be around 700, uh, 800 queries per second, and then it will go down with 40 and 100 will be about like 400 queries uh, per second. You see the difference. Uh, this is because, of course, Postgres uses more threads uh, to run queries, not subsequently. Uh, so the speed bump is pretty noticeable. Uh, as a result, uh, it outputs just a JSON files, uh, just JSON files. Uh, with some timings, uh, median, P95, P99. Uh, this is all done uh, by the framework itself. Um, yeah, let's wait just a second when it will be over and jump to the results. Uh, so the first result that I can show you here is EF search and how EF search parameter that can be used during the search phase actually affects the uh, accuracy of results. Uh, so this is approximate nearest neighbor search. And uh, this means that it uh, sometimes returns not the exact nearest. And this signalizes how close are these results to exact nearest neighbor search. Uh, and if we bump EF search to 100, we get almost uh, 0.98 accuracy here. Uh, then about uh, how parallelization affects the performance. And as I mentioned, uh, we get about uh, 76 uh, QPS for one thread uh, load. Then we go to five to eight for eight threads. For 16 and 20, it's pretty similar on about like 710 uh, QPS. And uh, when we go higher, it goes to, it goes down uh, with 600 for 40 parallel queries and uh, about 430 for 100. Uh, some more charts here. This is how database feels when we do all this stuff. Uh, you can see that uh, it wasn't enough RAM uh, for the database to build an index efficiently. Uh, that's why it took for about, about an hour, as I mentioned. Uh, and Probably the good thing here is use uh, database, use instance for the database with more RAM, uh, then it will be able to build index uh, two, three times faster probably, maybe even more. And uh, the actual usage of RAM when we do queries is about 16 gigs of, uh, sorry, 20 gigs of RAM. Uh, this is what Postgres used to do searches efficiently. Uh, 
You can later took these results and turn them into any charts that you want. This is, for example, a comparison of HNSW and IVF flat in Postgres uh, on this uh, 1 million embeddings dataset by OpenAI. And as you can see, HNSW performs pretty much better than IVF flat. It is still on the latest version 0.5.1. Uh, Built-in index is slower than IVF flat, but I expect when the latest release uh, uh, will be published uh, and this PR will be merged, they will be on par in terms of index building time as well. Uh, thank you very much, and if you have any questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer. Don't be shy. <laughs> yes, sure. Uh, Thanks for, uh, thank you for speech. Uh, thank you very much. You are using PostgreSQL for uh, cl clusterized data. Uh, uh, because if you have uh, uh, if you have only vectors, you can uh, put it one in one place. But you uh, use uh, relational database. Uh, yeah. Why? Uh, well, actually, there are multiple problems. Uh, there was a conference, AI conference, recently, and uh, one of the problems that all these newborn AI startups from last year there were really a lot of them. Uh, have right now is that you kind of have problems uh, with access to the data that you store in vectors as well. So if you have different users, you, for example, create a service for RAG, never mind, uh, or anything else, uh, and you provide it to like multiple companies, you may struggle from perspective of who can see what data, even like in one company. Some people, like one department can see some data, the other cannot. And uh, when you have a separate database, like Quadrant, for example, or Pinecon, to store these vectors, uh, it is pretty hard to manage this thing. With Postgres, for example, you have row level security uh, concept. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but in general, you can create uh, policies in SQL who can see what, if you have users there. And it is pretty transparent how to manage this. And also, with our experiments, Postgres performs pretty well in terms of search and index build. So it's also easier to manage, because you have only one database to deploy. And so thanks for the presentation. Thank you very much. So, uh, there were many reasons for using the Postgres with the extension, but uh, what about reasons not to? When would you not? What are the problems it wouldn't solve as well? Yeah, uh, so currently it is pretty complicated uh, to build with really a lot of vectors, like billions, for example. Billions of OpenAI vectors. It will be complicated because you can see here that even this 1 million vectors, it uses about 20 gigs of RAM. Uh, so you can use, for example, like in instance with 260 gigs of RAM, fit like maybe 15 million vectors there. But if you want to fit 100, uh, you probably need to shard this vector, use a lot of databases, and do all this kind of stuff. There is also a Postgres-based uh, project uh, called Green Plum. It is an analytics database in general. Uh, it uses Postgres, I think, 12 or 13. I'm not sure what version exactly, but uh, they, uh, you can deploy it as a cluster. You can, I don't know, like pull 20, 30 nodes there, and it can do pretty fast K and N searches over the whole cluster. So you just use it as a database, as a normal database, and you can easily put 1 billion vectors there if you have a lot of compute. Uh, a lot of instances, and it will work. But it will be a bit separate. Now I wouldn't use for like billion scale, probably just throw Postgres. Maybe green plan, yes. Yeah, uh, thanks for your speech. Uh, my question is related to Pinecone uh, similarity search. Uh, if you have ever faced, 
Yeah, just... Um, I just did as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, so uh, our uh, issue is related to, like, uh, actually right now we are using Pinecone and uh, with LangChain uh, yeah. over OpenAI, right? It's like yeah. uh, all of them together. And uh, uh, right now we are uh, we want to solve the similarity search issue with, uh, without OpenAI, uh, like, involvement. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, let, let's say we have... Uh, like a big database on a pine cone collected from uh, different documents, right? And uh, uh, we want to run our own uh, like a logic, uh, which will not use uh, OpenAI and just uh, use mm -hmm. Pinecone to get the data. Uh, can you suggest some solutions about it? Uh, yes, probably. Uh, if you don't want to use Embedding CPI for, from OpenAI, right? Uh, what languages do you use for? Uh, uh, in what languages? The uh, at the moment, it's uh, JavaScript, but uh, I mean, we want to. Uh, the, the, the data itself uh, that you create embeddings from, uh, what, what is the data? You store embeddings ah, in Python? Like yeah, English what is the data? Yeah, yeah, the text, like uh, English, text. English, English, yeah. Yeah, so English. probably I would use just GT small model. GT small? GTE, yeah, like GTE. Ah, uh, GTE. GTE uh -huh. small model. It's, uh, there is a paper from Chinese, I don't remember what research laboratory made it. Uh, it is a very good, very performant model. Uh, it has 384 dimensions. Uh -huh. The only drawback for it uh, is that it can only support English. So uh -huh. if documents are in English, you can easily use this. I think there is also GT large uh, for some other languages, but GT small is like perfect. We in general recommend using this model because vectors are smaller, you can store more vectors, you can do searches faster, everything is better. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And in terms of testing uh, Pinecone and Pidge Vector, in general, Pidge Vector is a little bit cheaper, uh, maybe like three, four times cheaper than Pinecone on relatively large lords, for, for example, like this data set. Uh, so uh, at the end, like uh, we can avoid from uh, open air, right? Um, if you only use it for embedding generation, uh -huh. yes, you can use GTs uh -huh. easily. If you use it, for example, for LLM as well, yeah. uh, then you probably want to deploy something like Mixtral uh, model uh, or Llama model. Uh, which one, sorry? Mixtral 7B model. There is a pretty good uh -huh. model right now, Mixtral 8X7B, uh, which performs pretty well in LLM benchmarks. Uh, it uses a, a concept that uh, maybe ChatGPT4 also use. Uh, uh, when you have uh, several experts, they generate something, and then there are other experts that choose the best results out of it, and then you receive the final answer from the model. Mm, uh, so we, we can uh, give a question uh, with the same like, it works lo logic, like, but different ways, and it will give us a... Yeah, it, it works uh, like ChatGPT or... Any uh -huh, li like, it's, oh, okay. it's also a large language model, Got it. but it's open source. Oh, okay. okay. And, uh, sorry. and and it's free for commercial use as well. Oh, that, that's that's great. Thank you. And uh, I want to use opportunity. Second question: uh, Is it possible to give a question about uh, Superbase? Yes, sure. Yeah, I know that uh, you work there, and um, we we use uh, Superbase as well. And oh, uh, yeah, cool. we found it very uh, useful. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's really good. Good job. And, uh, but uh, for sure, it's uh, new, and uh, there are a lot of things like uh, we, we are uh, trying to figure out, right? And um, uh, one is uh, uh, it, it has some cache. Uh, when we manually create a new table in database, it doesn't get automatically uh, updated. It seems like there is a cache, or uh, uh, we understand that it should dashboard? be done through migrations, maybe. In the dashboard or? Uh, in dashboard, yeah, when we create it manually, not through migrations. Uh, oh, uh, just one I, I will pass it to the front end team. Probably there is some issue with just updating the state. Uh, ah. So the front end is the React app. Database should uh, really work pretty fast on this. So when you create, oh, I think I know. It's, it's because like how the dashboard works, 
actually there is a project called PG Meta uh, that is used for executing like queries for creating a table or uh, adding a column and stuff like this. And when you create a table through the dashboard, it actually has separate calls uh, from the dashboard to the database, to the PG Meta, and mm -hmm. then to the database to create a table and then to add each column separately. Mm -hmm. But when you do it from migrations, from PSQL, or any other Postgres client, it's instantaneous. Ah, so it will work much like Yes, uh, yes. Smoother. It is made like so uh, just because we don't want security problems when you do this through the dashboard. Ah, I see. I see. Thank you very much. Hello, thanks for... Hi. It's thanks for presentation. I uh, wonder, do you have uh, knowledge or experience about Chroma versus Pinecone, the pros and cons, like performance and other other stuff. Unfortunately, not. I don't know a lot about Chroma. Uh, I can speak about Pinecone uh, a little bit, but yeah, if you want. Okay. What What is the advantage of Pinecone, like for other versus other databases? In terms of advantages, when I used Pinecone, I noticed that it's super straightforward if you, especially if you are like non-technical or something like this, to create a collection, to populate it with data. It is very straightforward, both on their dashboard and their APIs and clients. They are super easy to use. Uh, that's the big plus. And also it scales uh, very linearly and uh, you can easily draw like how many you will spend on Pinecone if you grow in terms of how many queries per second you want to execute or how many uh, vectors you want to store. It's very easy and very transparent as I see it. In terms of drawbacks, it's pretty expensive and you have to always like, it's pretty hard to put your data from Pinecone if you want to move out. Uh, that's all, I guess. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I have a question regarding um, basically the embedding size. So let's say you create a hundred, I don't know, word embedding vector of text. Uh, and I, w I wanted to understand whether the embedding should be similar for better results. And also, should the embedding size uh, be uh, kind of similar to the question size? So what would be a practical kind of advice there? So. If I understand the question correctly, the size of embeddings is always the same because it's the vector. You can think of it as an array of numbers. Uh, for uh, I, I mean, uh, like the representation of the text, like uh, so the text size uh, which you uh, convert to vectors. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. So vector is always a vector. It has. I mean, regarding the search results, let's say you convert 1,000 word uh, kind of paragraph and into vectors and one three word paragraph uh, regarding the search results would it perform the same or would it perform better with similar sizes uh, size in what term because vector has like chunk size like uh, the uh, chunk size yeah basically that you convert the chunks of text yeah. into vectors and depending on the size of the chunk uh, uh, can uh, the performance of the database improve uh, with search uh, the vector uh, when you create an embedding, a vector, it doesn't matter how big was the chunk of text or an image or music that you turned into vector. It will always be the same size for the database, for the embedding. Embedding will be, for example, like 1536 no, dimension nice. embedding. It will be always be the same size and the same will be for search, essentially, because like all the vectors are the same after they turned into vectors. Um, maybe I... Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, uh, you mean, sorry, excuse me, uh, if you mean uh, the dimensionality of the vector? Okay. Can I reformulate the Yes, sure. 
So given we have like a big text and we want to yes. split it into chunks, right? Yes. Before giving it like yep. uh, doing the embeddings. So does the ch chunk size should be similar to the question size with which we are going to do the similarity really. search? Is there any correlation between like similarity of the two sizes or it still will perform uh, as good uh, as in case of similar size if for example the chunk embedded chunk is like 100 times bigger than the question yeah. uh, chunk thank you uh, so i don't have a answer for this uh, but uh, it will depend on the model that you use uh, for embeddings because Apart from the database, database just compares to vectors. That's it, just mathematical operation, basically. Cosine similarity, dot product, anything. Uh, and Can I add one thing? Also, sorry? Can I add one thing? Uh, uh, there was a paper published. Uh, it was called Lost in the Middle. And uh, in the paper, it is stated when uh, the text uh, chunk is uh, bigger, uh, the information in the middle is uh, most probably lost. So. LLM models pays more attention to the beginning and the end, and I think the chunk of the text matters when you do embeddings. Uh, yes, sure, uh, and that was the second part of my answer. So there are no, I think, like a single point of view on how you should split your text or any other information to chunks. For example, OpenAI and most of their examples just chunk it by a uh, couple new lines or some fixed amount like 4,000 tokens or something like this. And uh, when a lot of researchers or practical users, they look at this, uh, they think that this is a bad idea but still use it because I think you're right about the paper uh, that smaller chunks are better but I'm not sure that it should be the same size as the question. Yeah, thanks for the presentation. Uh, from the perspective of Superbase, like you acting as like self-hosted service, is there plans to include with the PG vector as well some embedding models self-hosted or LLM self-hosted for your users? Uh, yes. Uh, so we have both self-hosted and cloud versions. And uh, we do have plans to do this either in edge functions uh, runtime or as a part of the storage engine. We do not yet have a fully working POC on this, but this is definitely planned. Thank you. Thank you.